Okay, here's your starter. So pause the video, solve this equation. Here's your solutions. Right, today's lesson. Today's lesson, we're going to look at something called small angles. Now, how small? I'll show you. I'll show you where, what our definition of a small angle is. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the curve of, or the graph of sine x, where your angle is measured in degrees. Now, you're really familiar with what that curve looks like. And what we're then going to do is we're going to look at the graph of sine x going between 60 degrees and minus 60 degrees. So you can see we've got a little bit of a curve and you can't see it very clearly, but I've also drawn on here the line y equals x. And the line y equals x is this vertical line. And you can see that they are completely different looking graphs. They just meet at zero, zero. What I'm now gonna do is exactly the same thing but I'm going to do it in radians. So I'm just going to try and straighten that up. I'm going to try and do it in radians. Now, there's my graph of sine x in radians going between 2 pi and minus 2 pi. Again, absolutely fine. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the graph of sine x in radians between pi by 3, 60 degrees, and minus pi by 3. You can see my red graph there. And what I've done here is I've drawn the line y equals x again. And you can see that it's really close to the curve sine x in radians. In fact, between pi by 6 and minus pi by 6, you can see that they're really very similar indeed. Let's have a little look at what that what we're going to say that that means we're saying that if theta is measured in radians and small so we're really you can see that our definition of small is really between pi by six radians and minus pi by six radians although you can also see that at pi by three it's not that dissimilar when your angle is measured in radians and small the sine of that angle is approximately the same as the angle itself. Let's now look at the graph of tan x. Here's tan x measured in degrees. Again, if I drew the line y equals x on it, you can see, yeah, absolutely, you know, not like it at all. And again, I'm looking at between 60 degrees and minus 60 degrees. Similarly, if I now Look at this in radians, your tan x graph looks exactly the same. So obviously I know that I'm going to only be looking at small angles. So I'm now going to draw the graph of tan x between pi by 3 and minus pi by 3. And I've got the line y equals x on there. And you can see again that between minus pi by 6 radians and pi by 6 radians, these two graphs are incredibly similar. So, our result again, when our angle is measured in radians and small, tan x is approximately equal to x. Or, if we want to write that more formally, well, sorry. If theta is measured in radians and small, then the tan of that angle is approximately equal to the angle. Now, sine, sorry. Cos doesn't behave like this at all. Cos behaves completely differently. So straight away, I've drawn cos x in radians for you. And then I've looked at small cos x. So you can see small cos x here is the red graph. And again, I've gone between pi by 3 and minus pi by 3. And here's the line y cos x. Okay, so they just meet there. They don't look similar at all. Right, here's a proof. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna prove these results. Now, you don't need to know this proof, 
but it's kind of it's it's quite nice to know and it's not that difficult so if you just have a look at the sectors below they've all got the same radius but the angle is getting smaller so you can see in these sectors that the angle is getting smaller and smaller and smaller now the area of the sector is a half r squared theta where theta is measured in radians and the area of the triangle is a half r squared sine theta coming from a half a b sine c now what i'm going to do is i'm going to look at what happens with the sector and the triangle as your angle gets smaller and of course you can see here that at this instance the area of the sector and the area of the triangle are quite different whereas by the time you get to this small angle here the area of the sector and the area of the triangle are very similar so you could think of it like that so as it gets smaller your area of your triangle is approximately the same as the area of your sector divide both sides by a half r squared and you are left with sine theta being approximately equal to theta from your formula right we couldn't see a relationship between cos theta and the angle by looking at the graphs but we can again when we look at our sectors and triangles so if you now go back to look at these diagrams, you can see that as your angle gets smaller, this chord length becomes much closer to the arc length. So here, this red chord has a very, it looks very different to this arc. But as your angle gets smaller and smaller, you can see that the red chord and the arc become very similar indeed. So we're going to go with the same idea here. Now to work out the length of the red chord from the triangle, you would need to use the cosine rule. It's a missing length uh, where you have your included angle in your triangle. So what I've done here is I've worked out the length of the red chord using the cosine rule. Okay, so my red chord my chord squared is 2r squared minus 2r squared cos theta. That's me just putting everything in the cosine rule. I've then taken out a factor of 2r squared. So as my angle gets smaller, my chord gets closer to being the same length as the arc. And to make my life easier, I've kept that as chord squared getting approximately equal to the arc length squared. So I take my value, my, my formula for the chord squared. I know that the arc length squared is r theta all squared. Expand that bracket. Divide both sides by 2r squared. So it gives me this result here. I then manipulate that algebraically so that I make cos theta the subject. And you can see that I've ended up with cos theta is approximately equal to 1 minus theta squared over 2. So from this we can say these three results. When theta is small and measured in radians, sine of the angle is approximately equal to the angle, the tan of the angle is approximately equal to the angle, but the cos of the angle is 1 minus a half times that angle squared. You will be told these in the examination on your formula sheet so you don't need to learn them how do we use them so here use a small angle approximation to estimate the value of cos of 0.4 so this would be the working out that they would need you to see you do you know that the cos of a small angle is one minus a half times that angle squared so literally one minus a half times that angle squared. What they will not be accepting will be you putting cos 0.4 in your calculator because it has told you to do this. So 0.92. Percentage error. So percentage error. So your percentage error should be, uh, and when you find the percentage of anything, 
you find the value of that thing. So the first thing you want to do is actually find the error. And the error is the difference between this and the difference between what the cos of 0.4 in radians would really be. And of course, you don't mind what sign that is. So that's why we've put modulus signs around that. And it's the error from the real thing. So you would divide that by the cos of 0.4. And of course, that needs to be a percentage. So it's just very, you know, it's a small percentage there, 0.1. 1.5%. Okay. Example two. Assuming that x is sufficiently small that terms in x cubed and higher can be ignored. Now, this is a familiar statement in small angles. Once you start cubing the angle, because it's so small, it's going to become inconsequential. You're going to find an approximate expression for the cos of 3x and the cos of 3x bracket 1 plus sine 5x. Okay, so you get your formulas at your side and literally substitute them in. So the cos of 3x is approximately 1 minus a half, 3x all squared. So don't forget it's only the 3 that you're squaring, you don't square the half. So that's going to be approximately equal to 1 minus 9 over 2x squared. And now what you're going to do is you're going to replace your cos 3x with this expression in brackets. And of course, the sine of 5x is approximately equal to 5x. So you're going to have, okay, 1 minus 9 over 2x squared times 1 plus 5x. So all you'll now do is multiply that out using your crab claw, your foil, whichever method you use. And of course, you've been told that you can ignore x cubed because it's so small. Okay, let me do that. Right, pause the video. You've got a set of questions here. One, two, and three. So have a go at these questions before we move it on a little bit. So question one, question two, question three. Here are the answers to those questions. Right, slightly harder. And this is the real reason, this style of question is the real reason we had a little time doing the binomial. We So we'd finished radians, came out, did the binomial expansion, and we're now able to do these questions, which we wouldn't have been able to do had we not had that time out. Find an approximate expression for the sine of four theta over one plus cos theta, given that theta is small enough to collect, neglect the terms in theta cubed and above. So what I've got under here is from my formulae sheet, the year 13 version of the binomial expansion. So, sine 4 theta, that's approximately equal to 4 theta. 1 plus cos theta is approximately equal to 1 plus, and of course what you're going to have now is your cos theta small angle formula. So there's your first step. You're now going to tidy up this bottom bit here. So that's going to become, okay, so what? The first step would be to become 4 theta over 2 minus a half theta squared. To tidy it up, what they've then done to make their life easier is they've written, they've multiplied top and bottom of the fraction by 2. So we've gone from 4 theta over 2 minus a half theta squared to 8 theta over 4 minus theta squared. You're now going to rewrite that. You've got to expand it. You can't expand a quotient. You can't expand a fraction. So rewrite it in that form. 8 theta bracket 4 minus theta squared to the minus 1. Now, this is a binomial expansion, but your problem is there's a 4 there. You need it to be a 1. So you're going to take out a factor of 4 to the minus 1. Again, this should be feel quite familiar to you. You know, 4 to the minus 1 is a quarter, 
So eight theta multiplied by a quarter is two theta. You're then going to put this into your binomial formula, binomial expansion that you've got there in front of you. And of course, this, anything after that second term, you're going to end up squaring theta squared, so you'll get theta to the four. So you're going to allow it to disappear. So if you now multiply this out, you're going to get two theta minus two theta cubed over four. And of course, theta cubed just disappears. So your answer is two theta. If you want to, you could now prove the tan theta result. Remember, you don't know how to do these. It's just really out of, sort of interest. So that I know some of you will want to know where they come from. You know that the tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. Theta is small. So all you're going to do is you're going to replace your sine theta with your theta and your cos theta with your one minus theta over theta squared over two. Now, it's up to you what you do here. You could, like we did in the previous question, multiply top and bottom by two. I haven't done. But I've just kept it like this. I've now rewritten that as one minus a half theta squared to the minus one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this using my binomial expansion. And I'm really conscious that anything above an, a theta cubed is going to be negligible. So here's my first step. So I've got that theta outside and I'm expanding this using my binomial expansion. And now I'm going to multiply everything out. So of course that would have become a half theta squared. When I multiply it by theta, I'm going to get a theta cubed. Of course theta cubed is inconsequential. So you end up with your tan theta is approximately equal to theta. And of course, for to use the binomial, you've got your condition of validity and that's going to be fine because you're going to end up with theta squared lying between two and negative two or really lying between two and zero, obviously because you've got that negative one there. So you know it's going to have to be a small angle. Okay, questions? So pause the video. Have a go at these questions and here are the answers. Well done.